was in eighth grade, our English teacher gave us a challenging writing assignment. We were to compare two books we had just read, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and George Orwell's 1984. I hope that all of you older students and many younger have read both of these important futuristic novels, for they challenge us to look at the society that we might become. In any event, I was either talking with or looked at the paper of one of my classmates, a really bright kid named Errol Altec. From him I got the concept, in fact the exact phrase, that both these novels looked at what he called a negative utopia. Impressed with Errol's idea, I used that phrase in my paper. Did I cheat? Did looking at someone else's paper or taking his idea or phrase represent cheating? Nothing happened, I should tell you. The teacher never challenged me. But over 40 years later, I still wonder, why do I still remember this student's name and the exact words that I used? Did I cheat? That sharp memory was rekindled when I read the provocative article written by the Belmont Hill and Windsor panel editors last month. They got me thinking, and I want to think aloud with you this morning about this challenging issue. For cheating is a subject of some confusion and much interest. How can it not be so? All over the news, all over our world, we hear reports of cheating. People cheat all the time. They cheat in schools. Witness Harvard's recent painful case of large-scale cheating on a final exam in a government class. People cheat on their taxes. They cheat on their girlfriends, partners, spouses. Professionals cheat in baseball and cycling. In an academic world where students can buy term papers online, and where you students, let's be honest here, might face the temptation even here at Belmont Hill, how can you not be aware of the issue? Some confusion is honest. As the panel article suggests, if two students work together on their homework, is that good teamwork or is that cheating? What happens when students collaborate on a lab in science? Given the complexities of getting information from the internet, what is plagiarism today? But while there is legitimate confusion on some questions, and we need to have clear answers to those questions, I want to look differently at this vexing issue. We all know what cheating is almost all of the time. Yet good people cheat. Why do students do this? The most common answer I've heard in my years here is that it comes because of college pressure. I understand that. I get it. You are all bright and talented students at a school that has more than its share of bright and talented students. And all of you look forward to attending a selected college that can give you opportunities for the rest of your life. Now the reality is that attending college A, or H, or Y, or P, doesn't necessarily provide any greater opportunities than college X, Y, or Z. But that's another story. We all acknowledge that schools like Belmont Hill put pressure on their students as they aspire to attend a desired college. But I wonder if those pressures for college are masking even greater pressures. Pressures that we are supposed to be somebody other than who we are. Let me make this more personal. Do you feel pressure that you have to achieve to be someone better or different than who you really are? That's a trap and I want to help you get out of it, or stay out of it. For one thing, that trap can make you do things you know you shouldn't do, and on that basis alone, it is important to remember one of the core lessons of this school, that actions have consequences, and that you need to be responsible for your actions. On a fundamental level of wanting to spare you pain, I remind you now that the consequences of a low grade on a test or quiz or paper, no matter how important it may seem at the time, are nothing compared to the consequences of getting caught cheating. Having to confront that awful truth, having to confront your teacher, your school, your parents, yourself. The consequences can be huge. In fact, sometimes well beyond the act committed. If you're a good candidate at Yale, you're still going to be a much better candidate with a low grade on a test 
than you are if you've been involved in a serious disciplinary incident. But this is not a talk to scare you or intimidate you. Rather, I want to emphasize, much more importantly, a second core lesson that I want you to take from the school. It is this. The most important possession you have at Belmont Hill and beyond is something you cannot hold in your hand. The most important possession you have is your character. And the public manifestation of that character is your reputation. I never want you to lose that. But it sometimes is hard to hold on to. Living in American society today, surrounded by extraordinary wealth and dazzling opportunity, I know it can be tempting, even intoxicating, to think of the things one might own or have. It's hard not to want these when they are all around us. But I promise you that your reputation is far more valuable. The longer you live, the more you will see and understand the truth of that. Why then would any of us ever risk our reputation for something as unimportant as a better grade on a test or paper? The truth is that in my experience, I have never met a student who set out as a goal to cheat his way through school. In fact, I can't remember ever talking to a student in my office who was being disciplined, who had made a long-term plan to cheat, or who didn't feel mortified at what he had done, who was not only ashamed of himself, but also confused about why and how he had ever gotten to this point. But pressures had built. There was too much work or too little time. Maybe there was procrastination. And again, who among us has never procrastinated or drawn a blank when we were supposed to get a paper written? Maybe there was questionable judgment in watching that TV show or game instead of doing the work first. Or maybe you just got tired or sick. Something that high-pressured places like this school do not seem to have much room for. But learning to deal with these kinds of pressures is one of those lessons of adolescence. So you plan better next time or you work harder, or you reestablish priorities. Or maybe you say that that grade was just not that important. But you can learn from this kind of situation. And at the end of the day, the consequences are not so terrible. After all, it's just a grade. But I know that it's sometimes too easy to say it's just a grade. That's why I come back to this idea of pressure coming, because sometimes we feel like we have to be someone we are not. I know that people glorify the teenage years. I hope there's much that you can and will enjoy, much that you will celebrate. Yet one of the key parts of adolescence and facing pressure comes in starting to figure out who you are and who you are not. That can be exciting as you learn of your considerable abilities, but you also learn your limitations. That is painful, but it is real. It happens, importantly, to all of us. Ask any adult. I'll offer my own experience. Having been a reasonably successful student in high school, I had the opportunity to attend Harvard, and my freshman year was one long lesson in learning my limitations. It is humbling to meet people who are simply much smarter and more talented than you will ever be. This lesson happens, remember, for all of us at one time or another. Sometimes it happens to kids in elementary school. At the other extreme, there are probably people who do not learn this until graduate school, or maybe even in applying for a job. But there are always people who are smarter, more talented, more skilled. And adolescence is a time for many of us to learn these lessons. The key is what we do with those lessons. So maybe you aren't going to be an A student in bio, or math, or Latin or any of those subjects where you want to succeed, or perhaps your parents want you to succeed. If you try your best, you should take heart from that good effort and make your peace with who you are in that subject. By contrast, to resort to academic dishonesty puts you in a fruitless effort to be someone you are not and with potentially terrible consequences. Let me approach this from one more direction, perhaps the most important one. The fact is that none of us is perfect. We all face temptations to do wrong every day, to cheat, perhaps to take something that is not ours, perhaps not to tell the truth. 
Part of what makes us human is that we not only have the capacity to do right or wrong, but we, unique among the creatures on this earth, understand the difference. Part of what is so hard for boys who have been involved in cheating is that they have had to confront the fact that they and we all have a darker side to our nature. That, if you remember Lord of the Flies, we all have a little Jack, or even worse, Ralph, in us. In Judaism, there's a wonderful image that we have an angel perched on one of our shoulders and the devil on the other. And both of them are whispering in our ears all day, every day. There's a Cherokee story that tells the story perhaps even better. One day an old Indian told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, greed, arrogance, lies. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, forgiveness, hope, truth. The grandson thought for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The old Cherokee replied, the one you feed. If none of us is perfect, we can all still strive to be good. We all know which wolf to feed. At the end of the day, that is what I and this faculty wish for you. When things get tough around here, and they do, remember that the most critical possession you have is your character. If you go through this school and through your life carrying values of integrity and honor and honesty, then whatever grades you get, or what college you attend, slip comfortably into the background of what is important in life. As we now head into this final quarter of the year, hold fast to what you have that is most important. And best wishes for a good spring. Sixth form.